If you ever wonder that can cause collision to work poorly and cause performance issues, and how to profile and optimize collision performance, then this video is for you. This is part 2 of a two-part video where we discuss collision in a real engine. In the first part, we focused on getting a better understanding of how collision works by answering the main question of what can cause collision to not work properly and get out of control. In this second part, we focus on optimization and answer the question we stated earlier, what can cause collision to work poorly and cause performance issues. As we did in the first part, today we'll look at some examples and comparisons that will help us get a better understanding of what can cause these issues. And we'll cover some of the tools we can use and develop to detect collision performance issues and protect ourselves from falling into them in the future. I highly recommend you watch the first part before watching this one, and that you take a look at the resources mentioned in the description below. And you can grab everything we have developed in part 1, as well as part 2, from my Patreon. A huge thank you to everyone supporting this content, and without further ado, let's start answering this part's main question. There are two main factors that can impact collision performance. The first is, how many collision primitives are involved in collision queries, and the second is, what is the cost of the collision intersection function between two colliding shapes, which is determined by the type of each shape. But before talking more about the details of them, the first thing we should always keep in mind when it comes to optimization is to profile first and avoid creating an issue that doesn't exist in the first place. And there's a couple of ways we can profile collision. Most accurate would be to record a session using Unreal Insights in a packaged build. Other quicker but inaccurate solutions would be to use stat commands, like stat collision and stat physics, to see the time of collision related functions, or to use the collision analyzer tool, and record the session to see details of each query. I'll choose to keep it quick and simple and use stat collision to look at the average time spent in seeing queries, the seeing query total time. And to be able to do some comparisons, I have created an empty level to avoid any lighting computations and use two tools to help me set up these comparisons. The first tool allows us to spawn static mesh actors and specify their details, like their mesh, spawn transforms, and collision settings. And the second one is a tool provided by George Prosser from his talk that we mentioned in part one that allows us to set up collision queries and adjust their different parameters. I modified it a little bit to allow a specific number of queries to be performed every frame. So, I ended up with this unoptimized scene, where we have 20 meshes with unoptimized collision geometry. Each of them is made of 100k triangles, and they are using complex collision as simple. And we are performing inefficient queries on them every frame. To be specific, we are performing three multi-box sweeps by object type with a 1k half extent and a 5k length against complex collision every frame. With these settings, our sweeps are taking an average of 150 milliseconds. Now, let's start changing one thing at a time and look at some numbers, starting with collision geometry. There is a couple of ways we can use to reduce the 100k triangles of our meshes. We can either export the mesh to an external 3D software, create a custom collision mesh for it, and re-import it. But this can be time consuming. So, let's see a couple of ways we can do that in the editor. One of these ways, if our mesh is using Nanite, a quick way to fix this would be to reduce the fallback triangles, which are the actual triangles used in collision detection. If our mesh is not using Nanite, but has some LODs, we can use LOD for collision to specify a specific LOD to be used for collision. Another solution we could use, whether the night is enabled or disabled, is to assign another custom complex mesh for collision. For example, if we have another low poly version of our mesh, we could use it as our complex collision. And if we don't have one, another thing we could do is to generate one using the geometry script plugin. Here I enabled the plugin and created an editor utility action that uses one of the geometry script simplification functions to generate a new simplified mesh. Then I assign that mesh as the complex collision mesh of my original one. 
These posts and editor solutions will work fine with complex collision. But if we ever needed to move our mesh or make it simulate physics, we can't do that with complex collision, unfortunately. So, let's instead use simple collision by returning our mesh's collision complexity to default, which will make it default to the project's default collision complexity found in project settings. Now, one solution to generate simple collision is that if we have the source mesh, we can re-import it and check generate missing collision to let the engine handle this for us. Another solution is to manually create simple collision primitives from one of the options in the static mesh editor, which are sorted from the most cheap to the most expensive for collision detection. And two other options in the bottom of this list that we can use are to create auto config meshes or to copy the simple collision of another static mesh asset. These simple shapes can further be adjusted from the details tab in our static mesh editor. So, whatever method we use, what matters in the end is the number of collagen shapes and their type. Lowering the 100k triangles we had in the first place to 63 using a 0 and a night fallback results in an average of 0.22 milliseconds. Using simple collision with a single sphere and collision complexity set to use simple as complex results in an average of 0.07 milliseconds. So, definitely collision geometry has a very big impact on collision performance. Before we move on with other comparisons, it's worth it to take a pause and see how can we protect ourselves and other team members from creating meshes with complex geometry in the future. Here are a couple of ways we can do that. We can either use the console command collision that lists objects with collision complexity to quickly find objects using complex as simple collision. Or in the content browser, we can create a custom filter to search assets with, for example, collision complexity set to complex as simple or triangles larger than a number we specify or physics size larger than a number we specify. And these custom filters can be used across multiple projects if they are by default stored in the editor's config folder. And one better thing we can do is to create asset validators. We can create validators on assets using complex as simple collision or on assets with large numbers of collision primitives or physics sizes. And now when our assets are saved or updated, we will get notified of any invalidations immediately. Now, let's do more comparisons and look at optimizing our collision queries. We are going to do a couple of comparisons here using the meshes with 100k triangles we started with in the first place so we can see some differences in the numbers. The first comparison is for using different shapes and trying to keep their extent similar. We previously had box sweeps with a half extent of 1k resulting in 150 milliseconds. But using capsules with the radius and the half height of 1k, we get an average of 95 milliseconds. Using spheres with the radius of 1k, we get an average of 90 milliseconds. And using line traces, we get an average of 0.02 milliseconds. So, of course, this is an unfair comparison since they have different pounds and volumes. But putting the numbers aside, the order of complexity of these shapes is what matters. Now, let's return back our box sweeps and compare different box extents. Using a 1K box extent resulted in an average of 150 milliseconds. Using a 500 box extent results in an average of 30 milliseconds. And using a 50 box extent results in an average of 3 milliseconds. So, definitely a smaller shape is better since it checks collision against fewer shapes, and this highly depends on the way these shapes are positioned and the way our level is set. Now let's start comparing different trace modes. When we used multi-traces by object type, we had an average of 150 milliseconds. If we change that to trace by channel, it results in an average of 110 milliseconds because it is detecting already overlapping meshes and stopping at the first hit, which is a little close to how single traces by object type work. 
and that results in an average of 70 milliseconds. And finally, if we use test traces, we get an average of 50 milliseconds. That's definitely better if we don't need hit info, since we are returning very early once a hit is found. We will not do a comparison for tracing against simple or complex geometry in the query, since our comparisons on collagen geometry answered that already. And if we had a scene with geometry of different collagen types, we shouldn't make a query that block all these types unless we need that. You should always prefer an ignore response whenever applicable. Another thing we can improve is to not use unnecessary settings like having collision enabled set to query and physics for an object that would never simulate physics, or using a movable mobility for an object that would never move. And there is a couple of other advanced settings worth looking into. For example, querying for a specific mobility type if we need to find movable objects only, for example, or skipping the narrow phase of collision detection which I won't get into its details here, but simply, it allows us to stop at the broad phase, where we test collision against the bounding boxes of shapes only, and not their actual collision shapes, which can be faster, but not accurate. I would just recommend you play with these settings and see the results for yourself. And one last thing we should mention is that if our project needs complex multi-sweep queries with large extents, and we have done our best to optimize our queries, yet they are not very performant, then we better consider async queries and batch or aggregate traces to be triggered together from a single actor, like a trace manager for example. I will not get into the details of doing this in this video, but you will find a better video and article explaining that in more detail in the description below. For this comparison, besides the time spent performing the queries, we also look at the game threads frame time using stat unit. Because what we are doing with async queries is removing some work from the game thread to other background threads. I will also change our query setup so my device can handle them. I will remove the 20 meshes with 100k triangles and replace them with 100 meshes, each with a single sphere collision primitive. And instead of performing 3 queries, I'll be performing 1000 traces every frame. With this setup, the average time of performing sync queries is 35 milliseconds. And for async queries, it is 50 milliseconds. This is probably due to the overhead of creating and handling those async queries. But on the other side, our average game threads time using sync queries is 50 milliseconds, and with async ones, it is 13 milliseconds. So, Let's do a quick recap on the things we can do to avoid collision performance issues. The first thing is, don't prematurely optimize and create a non-existing issue. But at the same time, don't use collision settings arbitrarily. Instead, know that the number of collision primitives involved in collision checks and the type of these primitives are what mainly impacts collision performance. So, prefer fewer numbers of collision geometry shapes and try to avoid complex as simple. Prefer lines over spheres, over capsules, over boxes, over triangle meshes, since their collision checking functions cost differently. Prefer query only, or no collision enabled, if a shape is not going to be involved in collision at all. Prefer static over movable for objects that wouldn't need to move. And for queries, don't query for something you don't need. Prefer test queries when a hit result is not needed. Prefer smaller queries when larger ones are not needed. Prefer querying on simple geometry when precision is not needed. And consider async queries when everything else fails. And lastly, get familiar with collision profiling tools and commands and create your own if needed. This wraps it up for part two of this two-part video. In the end, if there's one advice I would give to you and myself, it would be go watch back your physics classes. No, honestly, the only advice I would give to you and myself is don't just follow the practices we mentioned in both parts blindly and put them into each project. Instead, understand your project needs and requirements. Understand how the stuff you are using work under the hood. And if you ever come across a performance issue, profile first. And lastly, invest time in getting familiar with the debugging tools you have at hand and in developing the custom tools that suit your needs.
I've grouped all the tools we have created in both parts in a single plugin that you can get in my Patreon. And until I see you in the next one, if you are interested in more debugging tools that can make your life much easier, consider watching this video.